peace and God's mercy and blessings be upon you. In the name of God, thanks be to God. Peace and prayers be upon God's messenger and peace and prayers be upon him and his family. May God bless us all. Today is the new today, a fresh start for all of us. May God bless us with good deeds. Before I talk to you about what today's deed is, I'd like to ask everyone listening that's been on board with us since the beginning of the program, on this journey, searching for the most loved deeds to God. You might have been with us on this journey, searching for what pleases Allah. We've agreed that we unite our intentions, that we ask for forgiveness to be saved from hell, to ask for Allah's mercy, and that he be pleased this year. Every day of this year, we want to present Allah with a good deed, as if telling him, Allah, we know that this makes you happy because you said so, and that this pleases you. Also, because you said so, and we heard that there are good deeds that make you smile. And so we acted upon them, hoping that you smile and are happy, and show us off in front of the angels. Let's imagine the angels all gathered in front of Allah, and him saying with love, Do you see my slaves? Let us all imagine this when we hurry to achieve the most loved deeds to Allah. But not just achieve these deeds, but also learn how to love Allah and achieve these deeds as Allah loves. God Almighty says, We bring thee a token from thy Lord, and peace will be for him who followeth right guidance. Let's do what he loves, the way he loves it to be done. Today we're going to be talking about a deed that should be in each and every believer in Allah Almighty. This deed crossed my path, and as you all know, we should be following Allah Almighty's orders. The relationship between Allah and his creations can be read in his holy book and seen all around the universe. Folks, when we go through the Quran searching for deeds that he loves the most, you find a description of those who believe on the first page, exactly the first page after Al-Fatiha. Allah says, Alif Lam Mim. There is a scripture whereof there is no doubt, a guidance unto those who ward off evil, who believe in the unseen, and establish worship, and spend of that we have bestowed upon them. I stopped at the word spend, spend of that we have bestowed on them. I wondered why Allah start your Quran while describing the deeds you love the most and introducing yourself by talking about spending. This is what we will be talking about today. When I was preparing for this episode, I was well aware that a lot of you heard about spending and have memorized many hadiths about spending, and perhaps even verses about spending and what scholars have said concerning it. However, let me tell you something. On this show, we will talk about all the angles concerning spending. We will talk about how much Allah loves giving away. Did you ever think about why Allah loves you to give away? Did you ever wonder what it is he sees that you feel in your heart when you give it away? What kind of giving does Allah like and why? Remember the first episode of the show when we agreed to discuss what and why. And also, what does Allah want me to feel when I give? He wants to see how I give. Our good deeds must be part of our lives and we understand why we do them, understanding why worshipping Allah, not just upon intuition. I was stopped by a verse that addresses our consciences. So let's discuss that before we talk about giving away. A verse Allah Almighty said that if you heard it, you should be surprised. That was the reaction of the Prophet's friends. Every time someone asks you to lend him, you feel weak and hesitate. But when Allah asks you to lend him, you're not weak, for he is the greatest and the creator. Allah says, Who is it that will lend unto Allah a goodly loan, so that he may give it an increase manifold? Allah straighteneth and enlargeth. Unto him ye will return. The Prophet's friends then asked the Prophet, peace be upon him, Is it true that Allah wants us to loan him? He wants us to lend to him? Yes, Allah is addressing your conscience on the behalf of the weak and the poor that are embarrassed to ask for help, or that are not capable of giving back when you give to them. So Allah is asking to borrow from you, promising that he will give you in return something greater. That is why Allah loves you to give away, for example, one dollar. You'll get 700 in return. Allah Almighty says, The likeness of those who spend their wealth in Allah's ways is as the likeness of a grain which groweth seven ears in every year a hundred grains. Allah giveth increase manifold to whom he will. Allah is all-embracing, all-knowing. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, 
Alms is proof. Proof for what the Prophet was asked? Proof that Allah Almighty is more precious to you than your own self. Do you know why? Scholars say that love for money is human nature as well as loving to possess. When Allah asks you to give, he wants you not only to give money but also to give away anything you possess. When a person possesses something, he likes to keep it to himself. Satan approached Adam, peace be upon him, and asked him to eat from the forbidden tree. And that was related to possessing things, as mentioned in the Quran. But the devil whispered to him, saying, O Adam, shall I show thee the tree of immortality and power that wasteth not away? If you eat from it, nothing shall be taken away from you. It's as if he approached him in a way no human would refuse. Allah says that humans love to possess. So if you give away, that is proof. But proof of what? That the world is yours, even without possessing it. It is said, God let the world be in our hands and not in our hearts. A person that gives away gives from his heart, from his hand to another's. So today follow this path. Give up your love to possess. Go from loving to possess to giving away to others that Allah loves, to those in need, to the poor. Not only will I give away money, but I will also give away clothes, maybe time to someone that needs a person to hear him. Whatever time I give that person, Allah shall give me much more in return. And if you gave away money, he will also give you back in return, or perhaps get you out of a problem where you might have had to pay huge sums of money. During this episode, we will talk about how much Allah loves that you give away, but be careful. Lo, man is an ingrate unto his Lord, and lo, he is a witness unto that, which means that a person is ungrateful for what Allah blessed him with. We want to say, I love you, Allah, from our hearts when we give away. And not only that, today we are going to learn what feelings and what states he loves to see us in when we give away. So make sure that you do it with love. I love you, Allah, when I give away. I love you, Allah, when I go beyond my nature as a human, which loves to possess and instead give away to others. For Allah's sake, to spread the love God planted in my heart. For Allah has mentioned give away 40 times in the Quran and started off his book by saying, Spend of that we have bestowed upon them. Allah, now I'm aware that you love for us to give away. How do you love and when do you want me to give away? What feelings should be present in my heart when I give away? In what way precisely should I give away so that I please you? Scholars say that Allah loves you to give away, first of all, generously. What does that mean? That means for you to be both generous and for it to come from the heart. So you give away a lot and you're happy. A verse that stopped me as well as overwhelmed me because of Allah's words and his mercy when he says that a man that gives away four pounds gives away generously, a poor man that gave away generously as much as he could. So generosity does not apply to rich people only. Allah says, those who spend their wealth by night and day, by stealth and openly, verily their reward is with their Lord, and there shall no fear come upon them, neither shall they grieve. The verse was addressed to Ali bin Abi Talib, who owned four pounds and decided to give them away for God's sake. One pound during the day, another at night, and another in front of others to motivate them, and one more just between him and Allah. This shows his loyalty for Allah. Again, God says, those who spend their wealth by night and day, by stealth and openly, verily their reward is with their Lord, and there shall no fear come upon them, neither shall they grieve. He had four pounds. It's like Allah is telling us, that he wants us to feel this in our hearts too. So generosity doesn't necessarily mean you own thousands, it can also be when you own four pounds. So today, it's very obvious for us what we should do. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Allah does not take in regard your looks or your bodies. However, he seeks what is in your hearts and your deeds. So what does Allah love to see? He loves to see generosity and good-heartedness. Good-heartedness and generosity, which are present in a child's heart. When Chechnya was attacked during the 1990s by Russia, there was a child that had saved his aid money to buy a computer. But when he saw on television other children that had become homeless, the child went straight to the head of the mosque, a 10-year-old, and said to him, I do not want a computer, it's just something extra. 
I want these kids to eat, drink and have a home like me. This is generosity. Do you know why Allah loves generosity? Do you know why Allah loves you to give away generously and with good heartedness? Two reasons. The first one is, a person that gives away generously is a person who is certain that Allah has been generous to him, and so he attempts to give something back in return. Even though you can't return Allah's blessings. A person that thinks that Allah has given me, so I will give to others. Hence, that person feels Allah's blessing and is aware of them. Allah, this magnificent universe that you have created, this beautiful park that we're now standing in, with these exquisite plants, with these wonderfully coloured flowers, Allah has blessed you. My friend and I were walking around here and we saw some birds with beautiful colours too. I told my friend, do you know, if these birds weren't here, we would also be happy. Nothing would be missing. But Allah loves to pleasure us. So Allah gives you vegetables of various colours, a beautiful sky, and the calming sound of birds to pleasure both your eyes and your ears. Wow! Allah is so generous to us, and it shows from this universe that he created and the blessings that he gave us. Therefore, when you're generous to others, it means that you are aware that Allah is generous to you as well. Another thing, my friends, a person that is generous says, I love you, Allah, and I'm sure that you are going to compensate me. Beware if you doubt that if you give away generously, that Allah will not repay you. You find yourself reluctant about giving. But when Allah sees that you're giving away generously, that means that you are certain of the verse that Allah says, And whatsoever ye spend, for good, he replaceth it, and he is the best of providers. So Allah loves you to give away generously, so that you show that you're aware of his generosity and that you believe in him. Only then shall your worth rise to Allah. An example is al Sayyida Asma. When the Prophet told her, O oh, Sayyida Asma, give away so you are given back. Do not count what you have. Then others shall count what they give you. I know a man who gives away some in the morning and some during the night. And we've agreed that perhaps he gives away £50 during the day or perhaps £5. Maybe even 50 piestres. Whatever a person can give away, he gives away in the morning, in the afternoon and at night and then another time. And then he sees that he's counting how many times he's given away. And so he gives away some more. He keeps giving away until he finds that he cannot remember how much he gave away. Generosity is a state of the heart, not about how much money you possess. An Islamic scholar taught us that the beginning of each month, as much as a person could afford, if he could afford to give away £100, to break it down into whatever amount and give away some of it each day. Allah will witness you giving away some every day. If you had £20, break it down into ones and give one away every day. The important thing is that every day you are giving something away. Be generous, be kind, because Allah loves generosity and kindness. The first state of giving away, the first feeling in your heart that Allah loves to see, if you would like to say, I love you, Allah, when I give away, is being generous while you're doing it. Be kind and good-hearted. Like how Allah is generous to you, and he's happy while he blesses you, saying, I love you, Allah, while I give away generously. Allah also loves that if you give away, to give the best that you have. This is the second thing, to give away the best that you own. I know a man with a child and they both look after an orphan. The man sent his son to the best schools and raised him well. During Eid, they would both take the orphan and take him out and buy clothes from the same place that the son buys his clothes. He wouldn't take his son to a nice fancy place, then give the orphan some old clothes. No. Allah says, O ye who believe, spend of the good things which ye have earned and of that which we bring forth from the earth for you and seek not the bad with intent to spend thereof in charity, when ye would not take it for yourselves, save with disdain, and know that Allah is absolute owner of praise. If you're giving away the best you own, you've risen to the level known as the witness level. What witness? That you witness and know that you're giving something away for Allah. Allah says, Who is it that will lend unto Allah a goodly loan, so that he may give it increase manifold? 
to the level of Aisha, peace be upon him, that used to spray perfume on the money because they fall into the hands of Allah before anyone else's. Putting perfume on money. Who would think of such a thing? She's in the witness level. This is how Allah loves you. He loves you to give away the best that you own because that means that you witness that this money is going to Allah Almighty. Here in Turkey, there's a mosque named Sanki Yadam. Sanki Yadam is Turkish and means as if I have eaten. There was a man who, whenever he desired something, he would put his money away and say, as if I have eaten, and decide to give the money away for Allah. If he wanted to eat something, he would say to himself, as if I have eaten, and put his money away, to give away for God's sake. After years, he'd saved a lot of money, enough to build a mosque. So he built a mosque and told people how he got the money. So they named the mosque, as if I have eaten. In Turkish, Sanki Yadam. A huge mosque where hundreds of people pray for years and years, all because a person decided to give away for Allah's sake. Because one person sacrificed the money that could have bought him something nice, something he desired, but he decided to give it away for Allah Almighty. There's a man that I know that when he takes his wife out to eat, he buys a meal for the worker at his building or a poor man on the street from the same place he ate. Allah says, O ye who believe, spend of the good things which ye have earned, and of that which we bring forth from the earth for you, and seek not the bad with intent, to spend thereof in charity, when ye would not take it for yourselves save with disdain, and know that Allah is absolute owner of praise. Allah does not want anything from you. Allah Almighty wants you to rise to another level when you give away the best that you own. It is so kind of you when you're cooking at home, to give away some of that fresh food you're about to eat from, not to give away food that's about to rot to a poor man. Allah Almighty loves it if you give away for him. The way that he loves you to give away is to say, I love you, Allah, when you give away generously, when you give away the best that you have. The third thing is, if you would like to say, I love you, Allah, from your heart, Allah does not like that you reproach. Do not reproach. And what does that mean? Allah says, O ye who believe, render not vain your almsgiving by reproach and injury, like him who spendeth his wealth only to be seen of men, and believeth not in Allah, and the last day. By insinuating to the person you gave to that you tell them that you did something for them, by hinting that you stood by them, this hint wipes away the reward of this good deed. It clears away the reward for your help. Allah does not love this way. Allah does not like reproach. Allah Almighty is very generous. God says, Peace be unto you. Enter the garden because of what ye used to do. So we enter heaven because of Allah's mercy, but also because of our good deeds. Allah does not say, Only my mercy will let you in. Allah says, And it will be said unto those therein, Eat and drink at ease, for that which ye sent on before you in past days. He's telling you that you are the one that worked for this. So Allah does this and then you go and tell a person that you helped and supported that you've done such and such for them. Allah Almighty does not like these feelings at all. Why? Why does he not like reproach? Because a person that reproaches thinks that he's giving away from his money or his possessions when in truth no one owns anything in this world but Allah. Allah owns your money. He owns the possessions and lets you use them. So in the end it is all Allah's. So that person is living a lie. So when a person reproaches, they're lying, saying that they did something for you, when the truth is, no one does anything from their own, because Allah Almighty owns everything. This is why those who believe in Allah, such as Al-Fudal bin Al-Iyad said, May Allah have mercy on the poor, for they took our money and delivered it to Allah's throne. So they took their money and they are thanking them for accepting their money in the first place. Because in the end, it's no one's money. Not for any creature, it's Allah's money. Allah Almighty says, Bestow upon them of the wealth of Allah, which he hath bestowed upon you. Those who believed in Allah would never reproach. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, An upper hand that gives is better than a lower one that takes. What he meant is that you should work hard so that you can also give and not just take. Work hard and make money so that you give away, because that is good. The Prophet Muhammad's friends thought of it in another way. An upper hand that gives is better than a lower one which takes. 
what they started doing is giving away and their hand being under that of the poor man's hand as if they are the ones in need of the poor man asking him to accept their money instead of their hands being on top their hands would be under the poor man's hand so beautiful and touches the heart in an incredible way why don't you try it today if you decide to give away to a poor man today or tomorrow why don't you try putting your hand beneath his no matter how much you're giving him instead of your hand being on top and telling him to come to you as if telling Allah that you see the other man's hand is better than your own the hand that takes is better than the one that gives and that you feel this in your heart telling Allah that you feel that you are in need of a person in need Allah would be so happy if you gave away but at the same time angry that you reproached so we will not reproach my friends we will give away while saying thank you Allah that you have given us money to give away thank you for making me generous enough to give away and that I'm not greedy thank you Allah that there is a man in need that accepted my arms thank you Allah for you shall compensate me for my good deeds thank you Allah for this reward so when you give away you are a king to Allah do not reproach again Allah says render not vain your arms giving by reproach and injury number one we will be generous when we give away number two we will give away the best that we have while you say I love you Allah Allah says we bring thee a token from thy Lord and peace will be for him who followeth right guidance number three do not reproach let me end this episode by saying this some people give money away to organizations others give clothes others give food and that's amazing Allah loves you to also give away yourself from your hand to another hand in need go to areas where there is poverty where poor people live do you know why Allah loves you to give away yourself so you witness the blessings that he has given you so when you leave your house that you don't like very much and go to a house that doesn't have a bathroom or is crowded seven people living in a small room and you give away you will count your blessings you will go home thanking Allah give away by yourself and do not forget that there are organizations in Egypt where you buy food yourself and give away yourself as well the man behind this idea was going to a funeral for one of his workers in an area where poverty was widespread and the same day he was going to his friend's son's wedding at a five-star hotel so he decided to take money from the rich and give it to the poor and that's how he got the idea how amazing is it that a person goes down themselves and gives away to others at that moment you will witness Allah's blessings I swear we love you Allah I swear to you Allah that we will give away for your sake I just hope that you felt what I meant when I was talking dear viewers I hope that life's possessions do not mean much to any of you anymore and that it's easier for you to give away now to not be possessive anymore and to seek a way to please Allah money comes and goes possessions come and go they are all in the hands of Allah for he blesses who wishes and does not bless who he wishes let's make a pact today I'm asking you to make Allah happy today again I'm asking you to make him happy today I'm begging you don't sleep without giving away how much as much as you can Allah says Allah tasketh not a soul beyond its scope and if you can't do it today because it's too late then decide on an amount to give away and do it tomorrow intend to give away open your closet and see the best that you own and give it away tomorrow before breakfast tomorrow before the day is over you're going to give away the clothes and the money right now while I speak decide on how much you want to give away Allah please accept my good deeds and be pleased I love you Allah when I give away for your sake